Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to create MVC core project without authentication. And then we're going to manually customize and scaffold an identity into our application. We're going to manually customize our application user. We're going to use that application user and our context to create a register page, a login page, and a whole bunch of other features. Please watch till the very end. All right, so let's go to Visual Studio and create a new MVC project. And we're going to call it ASP.NET Core Identity Custom. Let's click on Next. Here, we're going to choose .NET 6.0 for our framework. And our authentication, we're going to leave it to None. We're going to configure this later. So let's create our project. Visual Studio is taking its own time. And here it is. So here we have a very basic implementation of our MVC application. Let's take a quick look around on our project structure. Here we have our home controllers. We have an era view model. We have our home page. We have our shared layouts. We have our app settings, and we have our program.cs. Let's take a quick look inside the configuration under program.cs. As you can see, it's a very basic implementation for MVC. We have routing, static files, redirection for HTTPS, very basic. So the next step is to add the scaffolding identity to our project. So let's see how to do that. First, we got install a NuGet package called microsoft.visualstudio.web.codegeneration.design. This package will basically help us scaffold our identity into our project. So now, let's go to our project, right-click on the base project, go to Add, New Scaffolded Item. Let's go to Identity on the left, and we add Identity, and click on Add. Let's wait for Visual Studio to collect some information. Awesome. Here, we have our Add Identity window. At the very top, we have to select a layout. We already have a partial layout, so we're going to select that. So let's click on the three-dotted button. We're going to go to our Views, Shared, and we're going to choose our base layout. Let's click on OK. And the next step is we're going to choose the features for our identity we're going to use. So for here, we can select login, logout, and register. If you want to add any other feature, you can go ahead and select it. But for this tutorial, we're going to see only login, logout, and register. So the next step is the data context class. This is the class which we will use to access our database. So to add this, let's click on the new data context button. Here, we have a suggested name, which is quite long. So we're going to rename it to identity to application db context and click on add and the next step is our user class this is the class which we will use to basically authenticate our whole application with we can choose any name but here we're going to call it application user and then we're going to click on add once we have all the sections configured, we're going to click on Add and wait for Visual Studio to configure our identity. Let's wait for Visual Studio. Awesome. Now we have our identity scaffolded. Now let's take a look at what all changes have occurred. Here we have a brand new folder called areas, identity, we have a section called data, and we have a section called pages. And on pages, we have accounts. Let's take a quick look at what the sections are underneath our areas page. So let's click on the application DB context. So this is the context for our database with which we will uh, access our SQL server. And then 
we have our application user. As, as you can see, this inherits from the identity user. So this is the identity user application object. And then we have our login page, our logout page, and then our register page. Now let's run the application and see how the whole thing looks. So let's go to debug, start with our debugging. Awesome. So we have a very bare bones HTML page, which has a header up here with home and privacy. Now, we should ideally have a login and register uh, hyperlinks at the very top. So let's see how to add that. So let's close all the windows. It's becoming crowded. We go to our layout and then this is our header. And right after our nav bar, we're gonna say partial name is equal to, we're gonna add our login partial. Our login partial was automatically added by our scaffolding. So once we save it, Let's go to our page and refresh. And as you can see, we have our login and register automatically added to our header. So now let's see how the login and register pages look. Let's click on register. Hmm, so something's wrong here. This link doesn't work. Let's see why. So the way identity is implemented in ASP.NET MVC is with Razor pages. So we have an MVC application which needs Razor page support. So for that link to work, we will have to inject our pro inject our program with Razor page support. For that, we go to our program.cs and add map Razor pages. Then once we save, let's go to our home page. Now let's click on register. Oh, we have to build our website. Okay, awesome. Now let's click on register. And there we go. Now we are successfully transferred to a register page. Let's look at the login page. Awesome. So the next step, the next step is to look at the register page. So here we have three fields. We have email, password, and confirm password. But we're missing a couple of fields here. Usually when you sign up for any page, you will have to give in your first name and your last name, or at least your first name. So we're gonna add our first name and last name to this page. Let's see how to do that. Let's close all those windows. So first, we are going to go to our application user class. So this is the class which is used to authenticate our entire website. So here, we're going to add two properties. First one is called first name. The second one is called last name. Amazing. Now, once we added these, we need to configure the property in our database. So how are we going to configure this in our database? For that, we go to our DB context and our under model creating, you say builder dot apply configuration. We're going to create a new class called application user entity configuration. And we're going to create this class. And it's going to inherit from the interface called I entity type configuration. And we're going to pass the application user class. So this is an interface which implements the application configuration. So it has a couple of mandatory objects that we have to implement. So we're going to right click, implement missing members. And here we go. So here we can configure the field type, if it's mandatory or not, a whole myriad of options. But for our application, we're just going to set the maximum length for the first name and the last name. So let's see how to do that. So here we're going to add builder dot property u dot first name dot has max length 255. And 
and then we're going to apply the same for our last name and awesome so now we have our our application user configured to have a maximum length of 255 characters once we have our entity configuration set we can create a database so let's quickly check our app settings for the connection string in the app settings we have a default connection string added by our scaffolding here we have our server set to local slash mssql and our database set to spnet core identity custom awesome now let's create our database the first step is to add a migration and the second step we will import the migration and update our database so let's add a migration first to add a migration we say add migration init application user our solution is building and here we go we have successfully created the migration we will have all these tables being created including our asp.net user table with the first name and the last name we had configured earlier now we can go ahead and update our database so let's go to our package manager console and update database once the script is complete we can go to our SQL studio and refresh our database and here we have our ASP.NET Core Identity Custom under tables. We have all our tables created. Let's check the ASP.NET Users table. And awesome, we successfully have created the database.